Hi guys, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll cover how to calculate the different LOD scores and the recombination fraction theta for given pedigree. Uh, a basic introduction to what uh, linkage disequilibrium is composed of. It is basically the non-random association of alleles from different loci that can provide a valuable information on the structure of haplotypes in a genome. Uh, it is often the basis for evaluating the association of genomic variation with human traits among unrelated subjects. But the linkage phase of a genetic marker is measured on unrelated subject is, and is typically unknown. Basically, we do not know which allele is the mutant one and which one is a normal one. So we test whether it differs significantly from a null value or zero and it requires some statistical measure which uh, i will uh, be showing in some time and we can say that uh, when genes are found on different chromosomes or are far apart in the same chromosome they are sort independently which means that they are unlinked and if the genes are close together on the same chromosome then the alleles or the gene versions will be inherited as a unit that is more frequently uh, than not uh, linked gene loci so for the first example, I will show a pedigree where we have three generations and we know that the mutation, uh, basically the disease mutant is given in the black color and we are trying to locate the recombination fraction theta and the linkage, the log of linkage disequilibrium score. Uh, I will show how to calculate this using an Excel file. So basically, in the first generation, we can see the genotypes A2, A6 and A1, A5. We see that the black colored one is A1, A5. Now, if we look at generation two, the A1, A2 genotype, which is a, uh, a direct child of A2, A6 and A1, A5 carries the allele A1. So we can say that A1 was the one that caused the disease. Similarly, we create generation 3 with the parents A1, A2 and A3, A4. Now we have around 10, uh, I mean exactly 10 children in this generation and we need to locate the ones that are the recombinant ones and the non-recombinant ones. So we can say that uh, in the generation 3, A2, A3 appears as the recombinant genotype as this, this particular marker still exhibits the disease because uh, all the A1, A, the A1 alleles have been causing the disease successfully in the third generation and only A2, A3 was the one which got the disease despite being healthy. And I mean, despite uh, we knowing that A2 was a healthy gene, uh, a healthy allele until the generation two. So we can now calculate the value of theta where for uh, the 10 people that are in this generation with one recombinant and the nine recombinant non-recombinants. So we represent the non-recombinants with one minus theta and the likelihood of linkage will be given by this particular formula, which is one minus theta raised to the power of uh, the number that we have, the number of non-recombinants and then uh, multiplied by theta, which is raised to the power of the recombinants we found. Now, if we do not find any linkage in the loci, then the max, the theta is taken as 0.5 or one by two. So for this case, the log of linkage disequilibrium will be given by the log to the base 10 of the fraction L theta of over L of 1.5, where L represents the likelihood of this linkage and unlinkage. In the Excel file, I have created a simple formula which co is composed of the enveloping log 10 where the numerator is given by the power and the denominator is also given by the power but here we know the value of theta which is given by 0.5. In the numerator we give multiple values of theta in order to generate a, a multitude of values of the LOD score, which we can later analyze and uh, comment on like which one will give us the maximum LOD score. So I have created a range of theta from uh, 10 raised to power minus six, and I have generated a simple scatter plot in Excel. 
and I have been able to observe that at point one I get the maximum value of my LOD score so this is the value of theta that I choose for this one it would be useful to comment over here that we may need more pedigrees or families to improve this LOD score so that it goes above the threshold of three which by Bayesian statistics is considered to be a good threshold to have a high quality pedigree. For the second pedigree, uh, we do not have the phase information about which one is the normal and which one is the mutant allele. So as you can see, the first uh, generation has these slashes on the images, which shows that we do not have the genotype information for it. So we lack the phase. In the second generation, however, we can see that A1, A2 is the one that is colored black. Now we have to create two scenarios over here where either of A1 or A2 is imparting the uh, disease allele to the future generations. So in this case, we will be taking a scenario where allele A1 is a marker for disease. This, this is the first case. So we can count the number of recombinant genotypes in the third generation as the one where A1 is healthy or A2 is diseased. This makes logical sense because if A1 is a marker for disease, then the recombinant one will be the one where A1 does not impart the disease. So we will be looking at the genotypes in generation three where A1 becomes healthy or A2 is diseased. So this will mean that the genotypes A1, A4, A1, A3 and A2, A3 are the three recombinants while the rest of the seven are the non-recombinants. So the likelihood of linkage in this case is one minus theta raised to the power of seven into theta raised to the power of three. In the second case, we consider that A2 is the marker for the disease. So we can count the recombinant genotypes as the one where A2 is healthy or A1 is diseased. This is the same logic that we applied above. So by that, we can see that A2, A4, A2, A3, A2, A4 again, a2A4, A1A3, A1A4, and A1A4 are the seven recombinants. So we count each one of them individually despite them having the same genotype because th these are different members of the population. So we count them as individuals. So we have three non-recombinants in this case, and the likelihood of linkage will be one minus theta raised to the power of three into theta raised to the power of seven. Now, we combine the likelihood of this uh, of both these cases with the formula where we add the uh, likelihood of linkages in both scenarios by multiplying uh, uh, one by two to them. Basically, we are saying that both of them have equal uh, probability of coming true. So we add both of them and we see that uh, if there was no linkage in the loci, then theta will be 0.5. And in that case, LOD will remain 0.5 raised to the power of 10. And in the case of our Excel file, we will be able to make a similar plot that we did last time. Here you can see that I have uh, taken the case of theta from 10 raised to the power minus 6 to 0.9. And I have observed the maximum at 0.32 where the uh, at theta equal to 0.32 where the LOD was 0 0.073. So again, a similar comment can be made that we may need more pedigrees or the families to improve the LOD score so that it goes above a threshold of three and be considered significant. So this is how we can calculate the linkage disequilibrium uh, score, well, I mean the log of the score and the recombination fraction theta. Thanks for watching.